everyone, this is Mr. Alberonin here again, and today I'm here for my breakdown on Dobby. The long awaited Dobby. <laughs> I'm finally breaking him down. It took a while because he's a pretty complex character, and there's a lot that goes into playing him well. And to be honest, I didn't have that. So he's definitely a complex character, has a lot of buttons, a lot of people call spammy buttons, but I think they're more screen control buttons. They're very unique. All of his quirk buttons leaves some sort of fire trap on the screen. So he has a lot of screen control, a lot that you have to avoid and be wary of when you're fighting a Darby. Okay, now let's just get straight into his buttons. So his regular attack string is this multi-hitting attack string. It has three inputs, so you just have to press it three times and it'll do all of the hits. Um, you can cancel any part of it into other quirk buttons. So even after the last explosion, you can cancel into something like his quirk 2 for free. And on the ground, you can cancel it as well. So yeah. It's a pretty decent attack string. It does a lot of damage and a lot of hits for a normal attack string. And it's really unique how it brings him into the air with like the really extra explosion. Um, his air attack string is this two hitting attack string. It's pretty simple. You can cancel it into his yellow attack which is a damaging way of ending combos. He's yellow attack into his work too, and then you get a lot of damage to end your combos. It's just a regular attack string. Now the one thing I'll say about his um, regular buttons is that they're probably the weakest thing about him. He doesn't reach that far, so like see even just from this far away, he misses the opponent. A lot of people will be able to like press in an attack button and they'll hit from like around here. But Darby doesn't reach that far with his attack buttons, and they're also not that fast, so that's how he's balanced. Also with his air version, he does reach quite a bit further with the air one, but it's still not great, and it's pretty slow. So, <clears throat> into his yellow attacks. Yeah, so his regular attack strings will make him a little bit weak, considering all of his other buttons are crazy amazing. So his yellow attack on the ground is this multi-hitting yellow attack. You can da combo into it, and dash cancel after it. You can even press other quirk buttons. Not that they really hit when you're on the ground. Um, but you can actually cancel it into his fireball and then do some interesting fancy combos this way. Oh, I messed it up. But yeah. His air yellow attack is a really damaging way to end your combos. A lot of people just do two hits into this and then it ends his combos and it does pretty good damage. You can also cancel it into other buttons, which is a really a reason it's good for ending combos, because even if a meteor blows, you can cancel it into his quirk 2, then his quirk 1, then comes and traps. So it just gives him good time to start putting out his things if he ends his combo in this. So like, see, after just that, I've already put out so many fires on the screen just because I was able to cancel it, them, cancel it into them all. So yeah, very good way of ending combos. Okay. Oh, quick side note on his um, yellow attack on the ground. It is actually another one of his moves that leaves a fire trap on the ground. And these will... If I put the opponent on a return to center, is he going to walk into that? No, he isn't. But essentially, if the opponent walks into it, it'll just hit them. You don't get a combo or anything, it's just another large fire on the screen. <laughs> Along with his plethora of other fire attacks that he can leave on the screen. <laughs> Okay, now for his quirk one. Let's start getting into all of his crazy fire attacks. So his quirk one is this fireball that he just puts out. It just travels at the opponent. It doesn't do that much damage, but you know, it's good to have a slow moving projectile. It's good for pressure, like especially at one slow like this. You can run up and do a red attack at the same time as it hits, or if you're further away, you can run up and do a red attack before it hits because they're trying to block it. It's just really good for mixing up, but that's not even the best thing about this move. The best part is that once it's out, if you press the button again, he summons it at the opponent, it does a lot more damage, like double what it usually does, and it also has crazy homing, so if I put the opponent on death, don't run into it. And then I press the button again, he summons it at the opponent, and it moves really fast, and yeah, that's basically its main use. It is really good at tracking down the opponent, this isn't being a very good example, but yeah, it just essentially it makes it go faster and at the opponent it's good for catching people off guard. Because they think there's just this slow projectile coming after them, and you summon it and it makes it faster and stuff. You can also use it for um, combo extensions, so if you have the fireball out, and you do like two hits, and you do the summon, 
Oh, if it wasn't that far away. Yeah, wait, I'll try again if I do something like this. To the summon. Then it'll make it... You can extend combos that way. By using the summoned fight. Which is a really good... Makes it a really useful move. Okay. He doesn't have a tilt quirk one, so let's move on to his quirk two. His quirk two is this extremely large flamethrower move. It covers most of the screen, and you can direction. It has directional input, so as you hold the button down, you can make it go to the left or the right and swing it around. And when you release the button, it will actually leave the move on the screen for a solid two or three seconds, which is really good. Crazy screen control. And yeah, that just adds to his buttons that he can do. It's probably the fastest of his um, quirk buttons that hits the opponent instantly, so if you're trying to zone the opponent out and you think they're going to run at you, you can do this one because it's really fast. And it's also really it does high damage, so if I just hit him like two hits into this, it'll push them all the way back, and it also does a lot of damage, like 6,200 damage for two buttons into a quirk move is really good. It's also completely safe on block because of the aforementioned pushback. So like on block, it'll push the opponent all the way over there. It's it's really crazy for guard pressure because as you saw before, wait, let me break this guard. Um, oh no, no, no. So yeah, it, if it pushes the opponent into the corner, the fire that's out is still gonna... Oh, I messed it up. Ah, I keep messing it up. But essentially, if you just do the regular version and you're facing a wall, Fire's gonna keep hitting the opponent, so you can rush in and break the guard really easily. But like, not only it's not that great of a guard break tool, it can be really good. But this main use is it just like any touch is completely safe because they're all the way over there. You can start your zoning and stuff. And you've got all the fires on the screen. It's just a really crazy move, for, like on block or on hit. And yeah, also if your opponent does decide to like, if they do manage to avoid it that you have this massive wall of fire on the screen, so very amazing in many ways. And yeah, if your opponent walks into it, it stays for a few seconds as well, so you can hit them multiple times. Very, very useful tool. Okay, um, in the air, his quirk 2 is a new move. It's this weird, like, he throws a ball of fire, then it becomes larger when it gets lands on the ground. If it hits the opponent, it will just explode and do decent damage. And you can do this after his air attack string, and it'll add some damage that way. Or you can even do it after his regular attack string. It's a good way of um, doing combos with him. You see this, a lot of Darby's doing combos like this online. If I don't mess it up. I shouldn't be messing it up because it's pretty easy. There you go, 9000 damage, pretty easy. And yeah, this is just another one of the moves that you always want to be throwing out. Because not only will it hit the opponent if they like, if you when you're throwing it out, it lands on them. But also, if it doesn't hit them, then there's just this large fire on the screen that, and it's, this is like probably one of his biggest like individual fires apart from his like work too. But yeah, it's a really big fire that he just puts out. It explodes after a second or two. But a lot of the time, after you end your combos in his armor attack. I throw out his quirk 2 and his quirk 1, and then put out a trap, and then put out this quirk 2 fire, and then, yeah, there's just so much on the screen, there's this big thing to avoid, there's his um, regular fireball that I can summon at the opponent at any time. Um, also, a quick note about the fireball, hey, wait, if I, how am I going to make him miss? Wait, if I put the opponent on dash, and then take him off dash, no, don't hit the opponent, but essentially, if you summon it and it hits them from behind or something, you can get really easy hit confirms off of it. Okay. Oh, what was I just talking about? His air quirk too. Yeah. Very good projectile. Leaves fire on the screen, so it's also a setup and screen control. Okay. So now for his tilt quirk twos. They are pretty similar. They, in the air and on the ground, they are these flaming blue fire traps. And they are really good. There's nothing really like them in the game where he just places the trap on the ground, and if the opponent walks into them, then they go into this crumple state, where you can actually combo after any point. So, like, even when they're on the ground, I can combo off them. It's kind of like Stain's plus Ultra 1 in that way. That they're super easy to combo off of, even when the opponent falls onto the floor. 
Um, so, well, where do I even start with these? These are probably, like, the most useful, but also most interesting and hard-to-use effectively tools of his. So, there are multiple ways to try and set these up. A combo that I tr like to do a lot of the time isn't actually a real combo, but I do two hits into this, and then if the opponent does decide to get hit by it, well, not decide, but if they do end up getting hit by it, I can go in for full combos super easily. I might get a wall splat like I did just then. You can't see all this damage that I just did, but that- oh my god. That wasn't even a- oh my god. Did you see how much damage that was? That was- I missed the, the combo reset, but that was... What, like 10,000 on top of... Um, I don't know, another 10,000? That was like a 20,000... Or maybe it was 10,000 on top of 9,000? That was a lot of damage if you- you can't see it in training mode because they're health resets, but that was a lot of damage for that simple combo even though it reset in the middle. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the reason I like to do this a lot is if I do it on hit and they decide to get hit by it, then obviously you get a combo after it if you see them get hit by it. It's a super easy combo. You can go in for a red attack and then into his regular attack string. And because they're stunned for so long, even if I'm standing like here, I can move around into a position where I know I'm going to get a wall splat. So yeah, it's very good because they get like hit for such a long time. You can get your positioning in. And yeah. And even though it's not a real combo, if I do it on block, it is plus on block because it explodes after I see I'm blocking here. So I can actually attack before he can attack if he blocks this. So let me put the opponent on... Just to show this in case you don't understand what plus frames are in fighting games. So I put him on action after guarding. So right after he guards the attack, he's going to press his attack button. So he blocks this, and then he attacks me. But as you see, I can attack before he can attack. I can actually attack before he can even stop blocking. See, there wasn't even a gap in there for him to press a button. He didn't even register that there, I wasn't like doing a combo. So I am extremely plus, I can even jump into the air, and I can press a button before he can press buttons if he blocks this. So it's very plus if I decide to do it on block. Oops, oops, whoa, lags. And obviously that means I'm almost guaranteed to get a red attack, especially since I can attack before he can. And if they decide to just block it, then I'm almost guaranteed to get a red attack because there's no time in there for, th for them to do it. A sidestep. So this is just a really strong move. But yes, as you saw there, that was showed the exploit there. The opponent can, if they um, time it correctly, wait, let me just remove his guard. The opponent can get out of it. Hello? They can avoid blocking it if they just attack straight after after they block... Oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> straight after they block the first two hits, they can... Yeah. They can interrupt it, but I find it works, like, extremely consistently online. What? Yeah. Anyways, let's move on. I've been talking about that for quite a while. So yeah, I like to do this because it's good on block or hit. On hit, obviously you get a combo on block. You can mix them up because you're a plus on block. And it's still your turn. Okay. Um, another way is just like after you've done your combos, you know, just put these on the floor when you're running around, putting all your fires on the screen, put this, put this, put your massive flamethrower, put your armor attack one on the screen, this one that sticks around, jump in the air and put these ones back run around, do some traps near them, and I think you can have about three of these on the screen at a time. Yes, yeah, so you can only have three. You see if I do another one, the other one blows up and disappears. But having three of these is actually so many, and that doesn't include the air versions. Or maybe it does. Yeah, it does. So you can have three traps on the screen at a time. Which is still a lot, because like having these on the screen is like so much screen control. And a way I um I like to set these up a lot is if I'm just if I know the opponent's not gonna try and press a button, I'll just oh my god, what is that fire doing now? I'll just dash up and do a few traps, just like in their face. Like if they I think they're gonna try and respect me. 
Um, or if they're blocking something or charging something up. Um, yeah, just dash in, put a, a few up in their face. And then, yeah. They're just really good tools, they're plus on block. You have to be careful about not doing them too much, because you can be punished. Like, if they attack you as you do it. And it does have some recovery frames, so you can't just be throwing them out willy-nilly, but they are a very good tool. Um, another way you can set them up almost guaranteed is if their opponent's guarding and you do a dash cancel on what they're doing. <laughs> a really good move that you can do that is similar to my two hits into, into trap, you can do two hits into dash cancel into the trap, and then depending on how you time it, um, excuse me, depending on how you time it, it'll be right on top of the opponent. There you go, and it'll hit them twice. And then you're guaranteed to get a red attack after that. Or you can just put out more traps. And then <laughs> you just put out so much. But yeah, I think they're just a really interesting tool. In the air, you can just dash up and like put out a bunch. <laughs> See that? I just put out three traps right on top of the opponent just for like dashing up and mashing the button. And then, like, even if you don't put them like right in the opponent's face, and you're like kind of just have them around the screen. They're such an, a screen control move. Like your opponent isn't gonna want to like walk near you if there's these all around you. Like if I'm trying to zone him out, you know I can put some of these up here, and he's not gonna be able to come near me. Like if he wants to try and come near me, he has to come through all of these fire traps that I have placed around. He can't dash at me because of the ones in the air, so he can't like dash in the air and do this. He has to like armor attack through them, and if I have so many, it's they're gonna like go through his armor. But yeah, they're just really good screen control moves. Your opponent isn't going to walk, walk into them, especially if they know that you get a combo from them. So, yeah, they're going to be very cautious of them, so a lot of the time I can just dash out, put a bunch out, and they're going to respect me the whole time, so much that I can just get a combo super easily. Okay, I think we've talked enough about his, his quirk buttons. Let's get into his combo. Actually, I'll quickly show his plus ultra one. His plus ultra one, I would say, is kind of bad. Because, here, let me show you. If I'm getting near a wall... If I try and do my plus ultra when I'm near a wall, it's not really going to work. Because he can't bounce off of all the pillars. <laughs> it's so sad, they just... It doesn't work, because they can't bounce back and forth, because some of them form behind the wall. So you want to make sure you're being kept cautious of when you're using this, because you have to use it in open space for it to work correctly. Um, Dubby is actually free to move during the move, so he can like choose to run away or uh, run in the direction they got launched. But he can choose to run away and like... <laughs> I keep running to where the opponent goes, but you can run away, put out your traps while it happens. And in Once Justice 1, there were ways to combo out of it by putting the traps in the air, but I don't, I've tested and I haven't found any way to actually do that consistently, so I don't know if that's still a thing. So a lot of the time, I just let it rock. And I just use the time to put up a bunch of fire traps. Okay, now let's get into his combos. So, a very, very basic, um, uh, derby combo looks something like this. So you do his regular attack string, into his quirk 2, dash cancel, 2 hits, into his armor move. It does... oh that did a bit less damage, usually it does about 9000 damage. Just depends, because he's all these multi-hitting moves. So it's a bit below average damage, but it's very easy, and as I mentioned before, you can... ending his combos in his yellow move is really good, because you can cancel it into a bunch of other quirk moves, put a bunch of traps on the screen, put his flamethrower out, all before the opponent can even get up, so it's really crazy, really, really good stuff. Okay, so I now I know you probably want some more um, interesting or advanced combos. So, Dobby is pretty interesting in a lot of ways. So, as I was showing you before, a combo that I like to do isn't a real combo, but it's using these traps to do these like plus on block pseudo combos. So you like do two hits into that, and then once you, <coughs> if you see they get hit by it, you can choose to go into a simple combo again, and then you're gonna get some damage that way. And even though it says it was what 7,800 damage, if you include 
1,000, uh, 1,100, it's like 800, um, 8,900,000 damage. So, pretty good stuff. Especially seeing as this is safe on block or whip. Now you can also do combos like starting in the air. To do a little bit more damage. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna show you some extra fancy combos. Darby doesn't get too much damage even when he tries to go like really fancy and I think that's one of his like main weaknesses but he can still get really good damage. So some fancy combos that I have with Darby are something like two hits into the trap and I dash away, throw the quirk one projectile out, do two hits, I mean okay wait I need to annotate this better. So I throw the projectile out but I dash cancel the throwing out of the projectile and then when I do two hits after my dash cancel, I press Quark 1 again, and it summons a fireball at them. So at that point, it looks something like this. And then I just dash again, and end my combo. And that does... 7,500 damage. It's a bit less damage, but like, it looks so cool, doesn't it? Um, you can actually make it a bit more damage, I believe, if you, um... Oops, 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 that's the wrong thing. Oh, why am I on the ground? But if he, uh, as you saw, if you do it after his quirk too, in the air. Hello? I didn't get hit by anything. Ah. It's a bit hard to time, I'm just going to turn them off of recovery just to show you. But it is a real combo if you're better at execution than me. And then that's some damage as well, actually that's a good mess. But it's still, they look cool, that's the most important part. <laughs> um, okay. One of the most, I think, the advanced derby combos actually involve his his yellow attack, his ground yellow attack. So, a cool combo that I've found is if you do two hits into his yellow attack, which does combo, if you cancel the yellow attack into his fireball, the fireball doesn't actually hit, which is good. So then you can dash cancel the entry of the fireball into what we were doing before, except it's after a like more damaging starter. So it looks something like this. Did I even get the fireball out? No, I, I did it too early. So you have to wait after some hits of the armor move hit. Dash cancel. Oh, too late. So. Okay, and then into this. Oh, no, 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 no. He got hit by it before it. He's supposed to. Ah! Damn it, why are we on the wall? <laughs> I just want to show it normally first. Ugh. And I didn't dash cancel. See, this is why I'm saying they're pretty uh, advanced combos. I can't even really hit them to showcase them. Okay, I'm gonna turn him. You saw it. It is a real combo. I showed it before working correctly. I'm just gonna turn recovery off just to show you. So I don't, we're not here for hours. No! The yellow attack missed. You can see that's already doing a lot more damage than his regular combos are doing. Okay, I'll try again. Hello? Why are we in the wall? Damn it. Oh, and you got hit by the fireball. So, you do really need to be careful of your spacing. No! <laughs> Damn it. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, come on, come on. You can do this, Mr. L. Roman. No, I didn't get the Bible out. I, can, I saw it. There we go, there we go. I did it, I did it. <laughs> And look, that's going to do a lot of damage, almost 11,000 damage for a single dash cancel combo. And that's a lot of damage compared to how much he was getting before with his 
what, like 7,000, 8,000 damage combo. But so as you can see from the amount of time that it took me to land the combo, it is a lot more difficult than... Oh look, now I'm getting it consistently. Look at this bro. I still got well, like most of it, except for the yellow attack at the end. But yeah, that's a good way to make his combos more damaging. And I also think it looks way more flashy, doesn't it? Like you're doing into the yellow attack. And then there's only one dash will cancel here, but you use that fireball into like extend it and you summon the fireball afterwards. I think it just looks really cool, and that's what I try to go for online when I'm playing with Darby. Even though it's a bit harder than its other combos, it's totally worth it in my books. Because it, it just looks way cooler, and coolness is everything. No. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, what else do we have combo-wise with Tabi? Obviously, like, if you've just thrown the fireball out, and you're doing something like... You can do something like this, and then that makes your combo free, uh, to get like about around 10,000 damage, which is really good. It's more damage than he's normally getting, and it's meterless. So you, that's why you always want to make sure you have as many fires out as possible, especially his Quirk 1 fire, because it gives him better combos. Ah, what? That missed. <laughs> oh no. Quick, quick. Okay, that doesn't hit when he's too high in the air. But yeah, essentially, when he has his Quirk, um, his quirk 1 5 all out, you do regular texturing into Quirk 2 and Quirk 1. You can dash cancel again to make it do some more damage, and then he's getting really good damage this way. And even on the meaty blow, when he d ends his combos in his yellow attack, you're always going to want to be pressing as many quirk buttons as you can. Getting out the quirk 2 fire, putting out the quirk 1 fire, putting out a bunch of traps, putting out the flamethrower, put out everything you can before they wake up and punish you. Because that's just how Darby's played. You want to make sure you have as much setups and screen controls on the screen as possible. But, sorry guys, but I think that's about all I have to say with Darby. He's a super fun character. I love all the amount of like traps and interesting combo, like weird potentially he has. All of his unusual buttons. Actually, no, I'm not done. I'm not <laughs> Keep listening to me. Um, okay, so. If, a lot of the time, I actually don't do dash cancels in my combos with Darby. So after I do my regular attack string, I do regular attack string into Quirk 2, into Quirk 1. Boy, it land on the ground. And then I just chase the opponent down, and boy. And a lot of the time, if they're... Oh my god. Good demonstrations. So then my Quirk 1's out, and why is he run jumping so weird? But basically, after you do like to end your long, your um, just like this regular attack string, you do quirk two, quirk one, and then you dash after them. And a lot of the time, they're going to press buttons in the air, or um, I don't know, jump another time in the air, or do something. So they're going to be in the air for a bit longer than this annoying Bakugo is. Which means that a lot of the time, I can just dash up and pretend I've just dashed up, you can do two hits into his quirk one fireball and then get a free combo extension that way. And then it's gonna, oh no, he got hit by it. But like, pretend, <laughs> just imagine that I've done the combo into quirk two, into quirk one, and I dashed after him, and then I'm doing this combo here. So yeah, we're high in the air together, I chase after him, I hit him with my attack string, and then I'm doing this stuff, and then it misses because I'm really good at giving demonstrations. <laughs> Yeah, essentially, um, you can make it meterless to go, like if you're saving up your plus ultra 2 or something, you know, stay in the air, summon your that, see I was able to get a combo that way. It's just a good way of saving your meter and not using everything at once. If you aren't able to get your combo, just do something like this, and then just make sure you summon the fireball onto the opponent. And you know, oh look, I did it there. But I'm. How many times can Mr. Alperona mess up recording one single video? Scientists are shocked. Um, another quick thing. I've got a lot of quick things. Um, Darby's regular attack string is pretty good at getting water pads, actually. 
If you ever realize that you're kind of facing the wall, like maybe you've done something like this, just go into his regular attack string and leave it, because you're probably going to get a wall splat. I don't even know what's happening at this point. Why am I still recording? <laughs> But yeah, regular attack strings, good at wall splats. His air attack string as well. Hello, lags. Can get wall splats if you're facing right into the wall, but it doesn't send them flying that far, so it's not as good. But just keep that in mind if you're ever trying to get wall splat combos. Okay, guys, I think that's about all I have to say about Darby. He's a really cool character. He has such amazing screen control with his traps, you know, dashing into the opponent, putting up a bunch of traps, putting up a flamethrower. Putting up this, all these fires on the screen that the opponent has to avoid. Doing extended combos. Summoning this fireball back at the opponent and letting you do more combos with it. He's just a really fun character, very flexible, and he's definitely a character whose strength is in the hands of the user. So he can either be an annoying Darby spammer who just runs away and does this move, and then the fireball move and does that all day and runs away. Because I know people like fighting against that Darby. <laughs> But there's also derbies that you fight online that are a lot more adept with his combos and setups and know really how to get the most out of derby in a actually fun to play way. Anyways guys, that's all I have to say about derby. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!